Good morning everyone from All Star Sports and welcome to a brand new Disney World vlog. I'm off to my favourite park today, Epcot. Absolutely love an Epcot day. I have to do it either on my first or second day. And today I'm going to be trying to ride Guardians. I actually missed the 7am boarding group by a couple of minutes, rookie mistake. And it was six minutes past seven and they were already all gone. So you do have to be on it at 7am if you want the early one. But I'll try and get one at one instead. I've almost always had success at getting the one at 1pm as long as you are right there on the dot at 1pm. PM, I've always been able to get into that boarding group. I've also got a dining reservation tonight at a restaurant I've never eaten in before, La Hacienda in the Mexico Pavilion. And the weather here today is absolutely beautiful. It's nowhere near as cold as it was yesterday. I think it's actually going to be quite warm later today. This is the store here at All Star Sports, Sport Goofy Gifts and Sundries. I will go in there at some point and show you around there. Not right now though, because we're on the way to a park. I've got a pretty early start again here. It's 8.15 and the park opens at nine and there is actually an airport bus here right now so that's good timing hopefully i should be able to get on this one there is a bit of a queue though i have arrived and since i am here a little bit earlier than park opening i should be able to go through on the early entry i guess you go through this bit regardless and i think they then hold you back a little bit further forward by spaceship earth but of course if you're staying in a disney resort you can go through so let's go and investigate that Thank you. And there is a sign here saying early entry this way, so it's actually to the right as you come in. So yeah, all the way down to the right hand side and then around by the look of it. And they will check your magic band to check that you're staying in a Disney hotel or any of the participating hotels. It does also point out here that if you have a breakfast reservation earlier than the posted opening time that you can get in as well. So that's the other way if you're not staying in a Disney hotel. If you did have a breakfast reservation at one of the Epcot restaurants before the opening time, then you would be allowed through to go to that. And I think my plan of action, since I've managed to get like a little 15 minute head start here, is to go and see if the Moana attraction is open, the walkthrough attraction. We haven't seen that yet in these vlogs, so I think I'll go and do that. And then afterwards, it'll be time for coffee. Usually I would get coffee first, but with that being a new attraction, I would imagine it'll get quite busy. So let's go and take advantage of that early start. And a lot of this area behind the construction walls will be opening in just a few days time on the 5th of December. I will be here for that. So we'll get to see on the day what is being revealed including the new Walt statue. I guess it's possible it might not be open yet because I don't know if everything is open during early entry. Okay so it is open let's go in and see what this is all about. Here it's explaining water connects us all of the water in the world constantly circles the planet from sky to seas and back again. I feel like my glasses are misted it up but it really isn't it's just the uh, spray going on here. And they are pointing out here not to drink the water in this attraction. I would like to hope that was obvious. Touch the strings of water. I could hear it a lot better in this one. I think it's because the loud music is over there, so it's kind of drowning out the sound. So hopefully you heard that one okay. Can imagine how amazing this would be on a hot day and you really need to cool off this will be my go-to place for that in the hotter months and this is such a pretty view here as well with spaceship earth in the background it says stand on the marker down here and wave to the stream in front of you <laughs> that's so cool there is a sign here that says dry path, so I'm guessing if we go this way, are we going to get wet? Oh yeah, there is. Oh, it's just kind of water on the floor. I don't think it like squirts water at you or anything. So this one is saying to stand on the spot and hold out your arm. So the spot is down here. This is so cool, I love this. Yeah. 
this when you walk through. Let me just see if I can catch someone walking through. So you have water streaming down, and as you walk through, the water parts to let you through. This whole area is just so beautiful, I have to say it really is nice. I could see myself coming in here and just taking a seat, there's a couple of benches around. Cool off a bit and have a little sit down, I think this would be really great in the summer months. Let's give you a bit more of a close up here. have more of these kind of jumping fountains or leaping fountains you might call them going all the way along here this one says stand on the marker and raise your arms try working as a group well it's just me here so I'm gonna have to do all the work here let's try oh someone else is here now yeah, this definitely works better with more people. Oh, and you can see the monorail go by from here too. And they have this little kind of splash pad bit as well. And just on the left of the attraction, so the attraction's there just over here, you can meet Moana. I actually met Moana in Animal Kingdom last time, but you can meet her here too. Yeah. So before now, to get from one side to the other, like if you were around by the Land Pavilion and you wanted to get over to where I'm going to Connections Cafe, you had to go all the way around, but this is now open, so it makes it a bit easier. And as of the 5th, a lot more of it will be open too. I have to say, one thing I do love, now I'm looking around, so you can see over there, is the Project Tomorrow area. You've got Spaceship Earth back here. I love all of these trees and greenery and just this whole vibe in Epcot. This feels very Animal Kingdom actually, having this much greenery, but I do love this. It's very far removed from the old future world before all of this work started taking place. When you think about what was considered to be futuristic when this park was built, all of this kind of greenery and trees was nowhere really to be seen, not to this degree, um, but I love it. I think it's very, very nice in Epcot and and you have to roll with the times. It's easy to get upset with changes. I am the sort of person to get upset with changes at times, but I am really liking the look of all this, all of this greenery going on. I think it looks beautiful. Spaceship Earth is down currently, otherwise I might have quickly done that before coffee, but we can come back. Hopefully that will come back up later. It's another one of my must-do attractions, and Epcot Day is not complete without it. The line is probably gonna be horrible in here in the morning, but we're just gonna go for it. Oh, it's not too bad, actually. And while you're waiting for your coffee, you can see them making some of the items you can get here. Hey, you can see how they're putting the chocolate on there. It's coming through a little conveyor belt. Okay, I found myself a little booth seat here, which is nice. And I've got my chestnut praline latte, and I did also get a cronut. I really wanted to get the apple blossom, which I had at and the Starbucks at Dockside when I was there last time when I was staying in the hotel. But I think that might have been an autumn seasonal thing because they didn't have it here. So I've got a cronut instead. I'm never gonna be upset having a cronut. I feel like it's such an iconic Epcot snack because I remember having cronuts here way back when they were over in the World Showcase at Freshman Port. Then they moved to a couple of different locations and now they're back here. But um, they've been around in Epcot for years. I also picked up a Festival of the Holidays passport, so I'm gonna take a look at this. I heard good things about the Italy pavilion, actually, the booth there, let's just see. So they have Montanara, which is fried house-made pizza dough with pomodoro sauce, parmesan, and fresh basil, or basil, if you're in the States. That sounds nice, I think I might need to get that. Then they have a pasta with smoked salmon and cream sauce. I think I might have to get that first thing though, the Montanara, that sounds really good. I'm eating at the Hacienda this evening, so I probably won't get anything from the Mexico booth today. Um, but they have a tostada with black bean puree, chorizo. They also have shredded beef in a corn masa, topped with onions and cheese. So they do have lots of stuff. It's like with all of the festivals now, they have so many different food foods. It always used to be just food and wine festival. I think when I first started coming, that may have been the only festival. And with the success of that, it's just like Rhone and Rhone, then you have Flower and Garden, then you have Festival of the Arts and Festival of the Holidays. 
so now they're pretty much year round. I'm not even sure that there is a break in between festivals anymore. There used to be maybe a couple of weeks, but perhaps they just run right into each other now, I'm not sure. Maybe there's a few days or something in between, but I'm pretty sure now festivals are year round. And also in here it mentions about the candlelight processional, which is something that I've never been to. It's nightly at 5.15, 7pm and 8.30pm. And it says experience a narrated retelling of the Christmas story and they do have celebrity narrators. Without further ado, let's try this croissant donut, or cronut as they used to be called. Mm. It is so good, honestly. If you're a donut fan, you will like this. It's like really crispy on the outside and then fluffy inside. It's just the best, so good. Pretty much finished my coffee and I was about to get underway. I was just taking a look at some wait times just to see what's going on. And don't forget in the mornings when you're in Epcot, World Showcase doesn't open at first. So the main part of the park is open before World Showcase. And for that reason, the attractions are always busiest in the morning in this area. So looking at this, you have 50 minutes wait for test track. That's not entirely unusual, to be honest, because test track is always fairly high. And 50 minutes for Soarin, that's pretty high. 45 minutes for Frozen. Obviously, they do open the ride, even though the rest of the World Showcase isn't open until a bit later on. And 35 minutes for Ratatouille. I think because that's way at the back of the park and most people have come in the main entrance, it might be your best bet, actually, to come in if you want to ride ride straight away and go straight for Ratatouille way back in the World Showcase, because that is actually lower. And that tends to get a lot higher later in the day as people make their way to the back of the park. So I'm definitely going to come back and do Soarin' and things like that later. I definitely want to do Soarin' because temporarily it has changed back to Soarin' over California, which was its original version. We've had Soarin' around the world, of course, for quite some time now. Soarin' over California, I think, will always be my favourite because it's the original one that I saw. So I definitely want to try and do that later. But that will get a lot less than 50 minutes, I would imagine, later in the day. While I'm in the area, I think I'm just going to go into Creation's shop so we can have a look at what merchandise they've got. They have all the hoodies and sweatshirts, with it being more of a cold season however it is currently 24 degrees and I think later today it's going to get up to 28 so I won't have any need for this today Becky actually bought me this for my birthday I absolutely love it I think I showed it in the last vlog and then she got it for me while she was here still lots of merchandise here for the 100 years of wonder celebrating 100 years of the Disney company oh I love this I haven't seen this one before is it new but it's kind of pricey though because it's one of the sequined ones $98 so it's a little bit more. I always like the idea of this plain black one because it would go with so many different things but this looks way too much like something that you could just get in Primark. I think because there's just no real kind of design on it or anything it just yeah it feels like one you could just easily get from Primark. I still love this one though as well but I just don't need another lounge fly bag. Must resist. Really like this one though. This is an annual pass holder hoodie for the festival of the holidays. And they do have the pass holder pin too. Maybe I'll get this because I always like to get a pin for each festival that I'm at. This is very similar to the Epcot Corksicle mug that I have. This one's for the Festival of the Holidays. Christmas Croc, which have little presents on them. They are $64.99. This is probably my favourite Christmas shirt that I've seen so far. I really like that. It does not say how much it is though, so I can't tell you. I think $29.99 quite possibly. The one next to it has $29.99 on it, so I'm assuming this one's the same. And they have Disney flannel pyjamas with Daisy and Minnie on them. Those are $59.99. I always love this lounge fly bag when I see it. If I was going to get one, actually, I think it would probably be this one. I really like that. I don't think I've seen this one before either. I think that must be new. I think these ombre mugs might be new. I don't think I've seen those before. We've got Mickey and then there's Dale down there. I see Goofy and Minnie at the bottom. So it's really hard to show these because it's backlit so the camera doesn't show it very well with the lighting. This is a Hulk Nutcracker. I've never seen anything like that before. He has a little hat and scarf on. That's funny. How much is this? $64.99. I mean if you love Marvel and you love Christmas, I think you would definitely like this. I was just about to leave and I spotted a different um, sweatshirt that I don't think we've seen before. And it has fireworks on the back. It's not a spirit jersey, it's more like a sweatshirt, but that's pretty cool. And just in case you are ever desperate for coffee and the line is horrible in Starbucks, there is a Joffrey stand just over here, which has barely got a big line. I'm just trying to make some very epic music going on behind me. 
was getting drowned out there by that. I'm trying to make a decision where to go first because I really want to go around the World Showcase. However, I don't like ending up in the World Showcase if I then have a Guardian's return time if I get into the virtual queue of one. I think I'm gonna head into World Showcase and then if it happens that I'm in totally the wrong place later in the day, I just won't bother getting a return time today. I'm in Epcot loads of times this trip. It's my favorite park, as you know. So it's not the end of the world if I don't do it today. So we'll see what happens. I may, I may not. We'll see where the day takes us. One thing that I may do today, or I might do it on another day, it depends how things are going, is to go on the monorail that goes from Magic Kingdom to Epcot so we can see over the walls and see exactly what is going on with the construction and even if I don't need to do that particular route for Magic Kingdom to Epcot, I'll do it just so that we can have a look over the walls. And it looks like you can meet Santa in here at the Odyssey Centre. I think it's closed currently. And Holiday Half Desserts is inside here by the look of it. They have something called Mouse Crunch, which looks like popcorn and pretzels. Going to Mexico for dinner later. I feel like I should go right around the World Showcase, starting in Canada. But that feels wrong to me. I feel this kind of gravitational pull towards the Mexico Pavilion to go to the left. So I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go that way. And just start to hear the music of the World Showcase over in Mexico. I love this so much. As soon as I step foot in the World Showcase, I am fully in my happy place at Disney World. Just as you go over the bridge, we're leaving the Christmas music and entering the Mexico Pavilion music. You can literally hear the change. And for dinner tonight, I'm gonna to be eating at La Hacienda, like I said, which is the one over this side, not the one inside the pavilion, which is San Angel Inn. I do have a reservation there later in the trip though. I'm gonna go and see if Grand Fiesta Tour is operating. I could just do a nice little gentle boat ride right now. And we have some Christmas decorations. This looks beautiful. Oh, I love this. This is by far my favorite pavilion in all of the World Showcase. Here we go. running around really fast. He's officially worn himself out. that ride it has huge nostalgia for me from my first trips like in the early 2000s and I love how angry Donald sounds at the end when he's saying goodbye he's like goodbye 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 Let's see if we have any new additions here I'm not sure I remember this one who has the elephant head why is it only a head it almost looks snapped off but I don't know whether that's because this is some kind of thing and reference that I don't understand or whether there was something else that has fallen off it. I don't know, but she just has an elephant head. A long time ago now, I did a video trying snacks from the World Showcase and it was ages ago I think I did it. So I'm thinking I might pick something up in each pavilion and then when I get home, I'll get Becky to do a video with me on trying World Showcase snacks. There's always things in each pavilion if you look around where there's things you can definitely take home with you that would travel okay. Like this, for example. Taffy with pecans. That sounds kind of nice. Maybe I'll get this. This is goat milk candy with pecans. I know for a fact that you are all sat there watching this thinking, get the goat milk candy, not the other one. Okay, I'll get the goat one and we'll try it in our video. I'm really looking forward to my lunch here later in the trip. I love this restaurant so much. It is up there as one of my favorites anywhere in Disney World, actually. Let's just check there isn't something different that we could try in the video. Chocolate raisins, that's too ordinary. What do we have here? Caramel coated peanuts. You know I am just trying to get out of having to try this goat milk candy, which does not sound overly appetizing to me. What is this? Caramel filled wafer cones. Caramel filled wafer. All of this sounds nice, but I have to admit, I feel like this one, because it specifies that it's goat milk, is probably the most unusual, so we'll go with this. And if you're looking for the churro ears, they do have them here in Mexico. I didn't notice them in the um, creations shop earlier, so you can get them here. 
This always looks pretty through here, but if you're ever here during the Flower and Garden Festival, they have beautiful orchids all the way down through here. They're so nice, you definitely need to see them if you're here in the spring. And there's the restaurant I'll be going to later this evening, so I'm excited to try that for the first time. Let's head into Norway and see what snack I can get for my video. I may come back to the bakery. I'm not totally ready to eat something because I did have a Krona earlier, although that was a while ago. We'll go in and take a look in a minute. There's often a big line here and there's no line at all at the moment. In fact, as there's no line, let's go in here first. I'm going to have a look and see if anything really takes my fancy. If it doesn't, then I won't bother. But if I see anything really good... Ooh, Verdon's Best Cake. What is that? That cake does look really good. And the left set is supposed to be quite good too. Okay, I succumbed to the temptation of school bread. And this was 5.10, including tax. And it's basically a roll that is not really sweet, actually. The actual bread is not too sweet. You have coconut around the top, and then this kind of vanilla custard that goes all the way through the middle. It's honestly so good. The great thing about this is it's not too sweet. So if you prefer snacks that are not too sweet, this will be really good. Okay, I just cut it open so you can get a look inside. So you can see a cross section. You can see the custard going all the way through. Okay, let's go for it. I remember this from last time. It has ever such a slight citrusy taste, but when I say slight, I mean barely at all, but it is there. It's just so nice. It has some sweetness because the coconut is kind of stuck on with almost like an icing, but it is just overall it's not too sweet because the bread itself isn't but it's so good one of my favorite world showcase snacks and this one is available year round so it's not for a festival or anything it's just always here right school bread consumed that was so delicious i actually took my time over it and took a really long time just having a little piece at a time and uh, that way you don't get too stuffed too quickly i'm gonna head back here into the fjording i think that's how you say that and see if i can find a snack for the world showcase snack video I haven't actually said to Becky about doing this video yet, but I know she'll be on board. And they have lots of merchandise here. Is this a, is this a spirit jersey? Oh yeah, that's cool. So Norway on the back and Epcot on the front. That's pretty nice. Wow, look at this Christmas mug. This is so big. I mean, that's got Becky written all over it. That is her size mug. I actually don't know if they have any snacks in here. They must have something, I would imagine. Let's try the next room. Oh, here we go. They do have a snack section. Let's see what we have. Nordic sweets. Dime, I've obviously tried that before, so we won't go with that. They don't have a lot of options here, actually. Looking for what looks kind of the most authentic. They have Swedish ginger thins. We don't have that. So I went with these in the end, and uh, Jonathan has very kindly sold these for me, so he wanted to say hi to you guys in the vlog. <laughs> Thank you. One place that I haven't ever eaten is Akashus, which is a buffet restaurant, or I think, don't think it's buffet anymore, it might be family style, but you can meet princesses there. And it must be popular, because there's a big line happening for it here. And I'm not going to show you all of the snacks that I buy, otherwise you'll have already seen them before I do the video. So in some of the pavilions, I'll show you what I'm looking at, but I won't actually show you what I buy, so you can see it when the video comes out. And this restaurant is great, Nine Dragons, it's one of my favourites. I've eaten here loads of times. I'm always blown away by the size of this store, it is absolutely huge. It must be one of the biggest stores in the World Showcase, I would say. A little bit like Mitsukoshi in Japan, that's huge too. And some little water fountains back here. $62. They have this smaller one. I like this one better, the smaller one. And they have these little trees. They look like bonsai trees, but they're all made out of kind of little crystals. That's really neat. I love this one. And they're all around $130. And also, you can imagine trying to get that home. And I think I'm going to have more of a choice of which snack to get. And we might be able to get something that's a little bit more out there. Numb and spicy hot pot. That sounds entirely too spicy for me. I know you're all sat there saying, get it, get it. Prawn crackers. I'm going to have to stay away from anything fishy because I just, I cannot do it. Roasted garlic oyster flavour Lay's at the bottom there. Lay's peach beer flavour crisps. What? That is the craziest crisp flavour I have ever heard of. Peach beer? I'm guessing this is like a chicken wing flavour. Does anyone else feel like this chicken wing just looks super menacing? Fried crab flavour Lay's. And crayfish flavour. Those are... Definitely tomato, I don't know if it involves anything else. And at the bottom, Italian red meat flavour. Some of these flavours are so random. 
snack bites, salted egg golden cube. I'm kind of bewildered by some of these snacks, honestly. Mango and lychee flavoured candy. I do like all these interesting flavours. Looks like you can also get um, like cup noodles, hot and sour pork bone. Yikes, they always have cute little plushies in here. Look at this donut dog. Melon panda. Oh, they have this little guy, he's like a s'more. And I think this is a macaron turtle. It's a sushi cat. What would this be, an avocado, I guess? And for those of you on Weather Watch, it's 27 degrees today, which seems crazy after how cold it's apparently been the last week or so. But it's really pleasant. At this time of year, even if it's hot, there's no humidity really. So, or very little humidity, so it doesn't feel sweaty or anything. It's just really pleasant and nice. But yeah, actually very hot compared to what I thought it was gonna be. I'm just waiting for the next movie and I've actually been here for a little while. I was just having a little sit down and it was really funny. I was sitting on this bench over here. I just sat there on my phone for a bit as you do and I could see a queue of people kind of going in that direction so I didn't really think much of it and then all of a sudden a photo pass photographer came and then the queue suddenly I was aware was coming towards the bench I was sitting and I was like I really shouldn't be sat here and obviously now one of the characters has come out to do a meet and greet I think people would have been very disappointed if it had been me sat on the bench when they came for their meet and greet so I'm just gonna wait for the next show here and I'm gonna go in and watch that like I say I worry about things going away when I don't have a trip coming up and I won't be able to see it again I mean this film has been going for a long time now so who knows when it might go away and there's a stage here it's normally the acrobats but this looks more like a musical performance because they do have microphones I don't know it says something to do with festival of the holidays so I'm not sure what that is maybe we'll see it at some point and um, we have a musical performance happening here in the Germany pavilion I love how the little stage is decorated that looks really pretty with the Christmas decorations And the caramel store has some decorations too. The real question though is do I go and get a Schofferhofer? I think we know the answer to that. Let's walk through the store to get to the bar and that way we get the caramel smell. Oh, what happened to the pickle tree? This is one of my favourite drinks in all of World Showcase and I recently found it in the UK in Morrison's. So if anyone else loves it, you can get it in Morrison's. It doesn't taste as good as when you're in Epcot, that's for sure. There is also a restaurant back here, Beer Garten, and there's a listing of some of the selections here. So they have salad, sausage, chicken, sauerkraut, schnitzel and things like that the reason I haven't eaten here I don't know if I would like the food because you know I'm a bit fussy but I have seen the inside of it when I did the world showcase tour it is a very beautiful restaurant and I do need to find a snack here in Germany for the video I think these are like spiced biscuits they may be in the running this is interesting they have Werther's blueberry acai blissful bites blueberry acai is my favorite flavor of vitamin water the one that me and Becky really like I wonder if these would taste anything like that. Probably not. There's always Herman the German candy. They also have traditional German apple pastries. Those are very heavy as well. I think that's not gonna be any good for my luggage. And even though the pickle tree is absent, you can still get the decoration here. They also have a pickle jar and sliced pickles and a glamorous pickle. It does feel pretty busy here in the World Showcase today compared to when I was here in September, which seemed very quiet. I had a couple of days where it was just so, so quiet and September does tend to be the off season. So it is a lot busier, but it's still manageable. It's not too crowded. The miniature railway is very popular today. I love when you get birds or squirrels in here and they just look like giant sized animals. <laughs> So I'm here at the Italy booth now for the festival. So I'm gonna get something here, which is the Montanara, which is this here. I've actually had to get the fan out. It is that warm, especially when I've stood in the sun in that line, it's actually super hot. It's like 29 degrees, which is so crazy compared to the last couple of weeks. And this is what it looks like. It's basically fried dough with tomato sauce and cheese on top. I mean, I'm not sure what is not to like about this, to be honest. 
they only had forks which I assume means that I'm supposed to be able to eat this with just a fork so we'll see what happens and the entertainer is out at the moment so I've got a nice little view here I thought I was going to be able to like cut this with a fork but you can't it doesn't work so I'm gonna to have to bite it this is gonna be so messy it tastes good however I am not a fan of the texture it's a little bit spongy but just not in any kind of good way yeah I don't know the texture kind of ruins that for me but the taste is good I think it's because the tomato sauce on the outside makes it kind of squidgy I don't know I'm not feeling the texture of that but it tastes good I'm obviously gonna eat it but yeah not my favorite thing okay I think he's planning on throwing that ball all the way over here Oh, nearly. That was so close. <laughs> I think he's going to do a redo. Again, so close. I'm done with that. It really wasn't the best thing I've ever had. I should mention it was $9 and the portion size was good, but I didn't even finish it because I just did not like the texture at all. It was not my thing. So I'm glad I tried it though. And my plan of action, I think I'm going to go over towards Morocco and get the boat back over to the front of World Showcase. Maybe ride a couple of attractions, maybe visit the DVC lounge or something. Then I'll be back over to World Showcase a bit later for my reservation. Uh, I just had to show you this tree in the America Pavilion. This is very beautiful. Today would be a good day to get the shaved ice actually, the Kakagori I think it's called. I'm just bypassing a lot of these pavilions today but don't worry I will be showing these in an upcoming vlog. I'm just doing kind of half of it today and half of it the next time and this is where the boat dock is to go across it's just in Morocco it's quite a lot of people waiting I'll ask that everyone remain stationary while the vessel is in motion that means if you're seated remain seated if you're standing hold on to those posts now this vessel will operate continuously every 20 minutes throughout the day it will discontinue service at 7 30. once the all clear has been given Take a look around, gather your personal belongings. Personal belongings include children. Welcome to Canada. I don't often go into these stores that are right by the boat dock, so since I'm right here, let's take a quick look and see what they have. As soon as we walk in, I don't think I've seen this Lotso hoodie before. The hood is like a Lotso head. That's very cute. They also have a stitch one too. That's $69.99. And these must be the ears that go with the bag we saw earlier. They're really pretty. Love those. I love this Kermit sweatshirt. That is $64.99. And I guess this is a Kermit cookie jar. If you had green theming in your kitchen, that would be pretty awesome. I have a Kermit bucket hat. Cushion and this shirt. I love the shirt, actually. That's funny. And I don't think that I've seen this Christmas range yet. So they have this sweatshirt. You can see it a little bit better down here when it's not on the model. These ears too. I don't really like how thin they are though, to be honest. They do look nice though. And um, we also have goofy skiing as part of that range. If you were actually going on a skiing holiday, these things would be really cute. Got a musical performance going on there too. Here is the big world showcase tree. I was a little bit further down earlier, so we didn't see it when I first got here. Love that, that is a huge tree. And it has ornaments representing all of the countries in the World Showcase. Just looking across from here, you can really see some progress behind those construction walls. Like I said, I'll get on the monorail at some point so we can see over the walls and get a much better look. And I do need to grab a drink. I'm not sure whether to go DVC lounge in that direction, although it's quite small so it does get full and there may not be space. Or do I just go back to Connections Cafe? I think I'll go back to Connections Cafe. Okay, I've come round to this back way because I don't actually want a coffee, so I don't need Starbucks as such. I might be able to just get a drink in this kind of quick service area. I'm just sat here in one of my favourite little spots if I'm taking a break in Epcot, which is just by this greenery. There's this little kind of bench here. And you can see Creation Shop is over there. And my favourite music has just started playing. This is my favourite Epcot music ever. I'm just sitting here for a bit, taking this in, 
very, very much in my happy place. And I'm just over here by Spaceship Earth now. It is still down, it has been down all day, so sadly no Spaceship Earth for us. I'm just heading over here to the main entrance to take some photos. And just to show you a little behind the scenes, so again, this is how I take my own photos. I'll probably use this one in the thumbnail, I would imagine, of this video. But when you're on your own, best way is tripod and then use the timer on your phone to take your own pictures. Okay, I'm all done with my photo taking. And before I set off, I thought I would just take a look at the attraction wait times again. Like I said, Spaceship Earth has been down all day. Soarin' is still 40 minutes. That's not too bad. I mean, that's really not that bad, but it is getting towards the time for my ADR now. I mean, obviously I'll be back a bunch of times this trip, so I don't have to really do any of them today. But Nemo is 15 minutes. Living with the land is 15 minutes. I could go and do that. In fact, let's go and do that. And just to show you the view, looking back towards Spaceship Earth, I'm just wandering over to the land pavilion now. Now with the addition of the Moana walkthrough attraction, I just think this looks so nice. And I do believe Living With The Land has some kind of overlay where it's decorated a bit for Christmas. I don't know if we'll get to see that though because it's not dark enough yet. So we'll see what happens. And it does feel kind of busy in here, but the Sunshine Seasons restaurant is not busy at all. Lots of people in Garden Grill. This is a very good restaurant if you haven't tried it. Oh my word, it's gone up to 30 minutes. I don't think I'm gonna have time for this line. Just be aware of that. You can check it on the app, but quite often I then get to the ride and it's gone up or something, so. I'm not gonna have time to do that right now. Oh my gosh, 10 minutes, yes. See what I mean? It said that this was 40 and it's 10 and it said living with the land was 15 and it's 30. Who knows, but we're not gonna complain. Let's go in. I'm excited to do soaring over California again. I am not sure about this. I feel like the wait time things might be toying with our emotions today. Made it here and it was 15 minutes. So, you know, closer to 10 than 40. together. I'm not sure which one I prefer. I always thought I preferred Soarin' Over California from a nostalgic point of view, but I would say they're about the same. I think I would have to conclude. But now I need to get over to Mexico again because it's time for my reservation, or it certainly will be by the time I get there. Wow, how long was I in there? It's dark now. I just heard someone saying that Sorin is now showing us 35 minutes. So who knows if that is completely accurate, but I think I might have caught it just at that sweet spot, which is good. And the monorail's got a Christmas makeover too. I'm gonna cut through this way. It looks very, very busy over there, going through that main bit into the World Showcase. So take a little uh, side step this way. So if you like to avoid crowds, this is a good way to get across to the Mexico Pavilion. It's very crowded here in the World Showcase. Let me just show you. Haven't seen it like this for a little while. Okay, I made it. That was some crazy crowds for a second there. This is exciting. I've never been in here before. <laughs> I'm now seated. This restaurant is really nice actually. I love the decor and I'm right by the window. I would imagine if you were here for fireworks time, this would be a great seat to have. Sadly, I will not be. I'm a bit early for that. And they've given me a regular menu here. Quite often at San Angel Inn, it's on a QR code, but we have a normal one to look at. Flautas, fried tortillas filled with chipotle chicken, potato and cheese. Topped with romaine, crema mexicana, I think that's how you say that, and ranchera sauce, that sounds nice. And corn chips with white cheddar cheese and salsa, uh, that is happening. And for specialties they have catch of the day, braised short rib with whipped potatoes, marinated New York strip with asparagus and gratin potatoes, and grilled shrimp, fish and scallops, that is very fishy. Roasted chicken breast with cream sauce, seared tenderloin, bacon, poblano and bell peppers, fried shrimp, stuffed poblano with rice, black beans, mixed vegetables. They do have a lot of options here. Some of the restaurants only have a few different things. 
They have some signature drinks, margaritas and old fashioned, and the avocado margarita. A lot of people really like that. It is not my thing at all. But I have heard good things from people who like margaritas. Maybe I could manage like soup, tortilla chips, and then the flautas. I don't know. I may not be able to finish, but then at least I can show you all three of those items. I'm sorry that I don't show you more things along the lines of steak and fish dishes and stuff like that, but I'm sorry, I just don't like it. This is why I need a travel buddy, because then they eat all the interesting food. And they do have a little stand thing on the table here. They have this crazy dessert. They have that over at San Angel Inn across the way as well. I think it serves multiple people. It's $36, so it's a pricey dessert. It's definitely for sharing. It's a chocolate temple filled with ice cream, and it's got um, churros and fruit and stuff as well. So it does look pretty fascinating. I think you kind of break the pyramid and the ice cream is inside. And on the other side, they have a tomahawk steak with whipped potatoes, mushrooms, and grilled vegetables. That is $120, I think. That is a pricey dinner. Okay, things have started to arrive. First up, I have my drink and I went for a virgin, I think it's like a strawberry daiquiri type thing, but no alcohol. Got some water and here are my chips. I didn't end up getting the soup because I did ask, I'm glad I did. She said it's spicy, so that is not gonna work. I don't like anything spicy. And now my flautus has arrived. It actually smells really good. The presentation looks nice too. I went for like a middle bit so that it's got all of the components in it, it's got the chicken in. Because on the end you don't really get the filling, so let's see. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of similar to the enchiladas that I get over at San Angel Inn. Very, very similar to taste. I think overall I prefer the enchiladas at San Angel Inn just because you have the crispy onion strings on top as well. And it's a bit more kind of like a baked dish, but this is really nice too. And just to show you the check here, my total is 34.35. Bear in mind I just had the chips and a starter though, so that's not necessarily representative of what it would normally be. The prices are very similar to what they are over at San Angel Inn. I'm just walking through the Odyssey Centre to head back and that's where you can meet Santa back there. And these are the times for today anyway. So 6pm is the last time. Epcot likes to make me emotional every time I'm leaving this park. Spaceship Earth is looking very special there with its lights. So it's goodbye to Epcot for today. Always a pleasure. Hey everyone, as you can see, it's now a different day. Excuse the pillow mountain behind me. There's so many pillows in this room because there's this pull down bed as well and you just have to kind of put them somewhere if you're only using the one bed. Um, I didn't finish the vlog last night, as you can probably tell when I got back from Epcot. I was so exhausted. I just got in, threw my stuff down and crashed out. I was that tired. So I just wanted to come on and say thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this vlog. Thank you to everyone who came up and said hello today. I met so many of you. I have every day of this trip. It's obviously a very popular time to be here. I'm loving being here during the festive season and seeing all the decorations as well It's just a great time to be at Disney World. It's still very hot I think it is gonna get a little bit cooler over the next few days. I'm hoping it's so unseasonably warm It's crazy it being like 29 degrees in December um, But I'm going to the Christmas party this evening as you may be able to tell from the red and um, that vlog will have already gone up You'll have already seen that because I want to put that one up first so it goes up before Christmas I hope you've been enjoying these vlogs so far if you have please do give this a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already i've got lots more vlogs coming every saturday and i do have a trip early next year with a travel buddy that you will have seen before and i think everyone will be very pleased to see again so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything i hope you guys are all well and i'll see you in the next one bye put your hand out we'll smell it get to know you a little bit oh all right i think we're good for some love <laughs> yes oh i love it oh it's so adorable Thank you.